Hello, I'm James Harvey, the professor of music theory at the College of Southern Nevada, and with 5-Minute Music Theory, let's start the 5-Minute Timer. This video is going to cover the musical staff and clefs. So what I have here on the screen, you can see three individual sets of lines here, of these horizontal lines, and at the beginning of the lines, I can even point at it right here, you can see a, a vertical line. So these horizontal lines, there's five of them, they make up what is called the musical staff. There we are. Staff. Plural is staves, by the way. There's no such thing as staffs. I don't know why we use staves, but uh, you'll get yelled at by a music professor at some point if you say staffs. Staves. We have three sets of staves here, each with five lines. You can see them here. There's one, two, three, four, five of those lines which make up the musical staff. Now we place notes, which we'll cover in a later video, on the staff to instruct musicians to play different pitches. The lines by themselves don't actually mean anything. So if I place something like this on a spot on the staff, that actually doesn't mean anything until we've put in what is called a clef, which is French for key, by the way. We're going to cover two clefs in this video, the treble clef and the bass clef. And I'll write a treble clef to start off with here, followed by a bass clef. So the one that I put up at the top is a treble clef, and this is the bass clef. Bass, yes, is spelled B-A-S-S. -S. It looks like bass, pronounced bass. So the different clefs change the meaning, or actually give meaning to, the lines and the spaces in between the lines on the staff. So I'm just going to use some, some simple notes, and like I said, we'll cover notes in a later video. But I'm just going to put these, these little circles here on this staff for the treble clef. Notice that I'm only put th putting them on lines or in between the lines. Those are the only spaces or only parts of the staff that we use, are directly on the line or exactly in between the lines. Each one of these is a different pitch. The higher that you are on the staff, the higher the pitch. The lower you are on the staff, the lower the pitch. Uh, one of the easier ways to remember the pitches in treble clef is this. Some of you might remember this from grade school if you've gone through grade school. Uh, usually this is taught at some point. The notes that are on the line in treble clef, we assign these letters to them. E, G, B, D, F. Sometimes there are mnemonic devices that are used to remember these. Uh, one of the more popular ones is every good boy does fine or every good boy deserves fudge. However you want to remember it, the notes that are on the lines in treble clef are E, G, B, D, F. And then conveniently, the notes that are in the spaces, just enough space to put that in there, uh, are F-A-C-E, F-A-C-E, and they spell the word face. So if we look all the way from left to right here in treble clef, we go through the musical alphabet from one E all the way through past another E to another F. We'll explain in this, a video soon to come why there are multiple letters here. Uh, multiple of the same letters here, like a couple of E's. Now, bass clef, if we look at the notes that are on the lines, we'll put those in there. These are different than in treble clef because the clef is different, and it assigns, the bass clef assigns different meaning to the lines than the treble clef did. G, B, D, F, A are the notes that are on the line in, uh, on the lines in bass clef, and then the notes that are in the spaces this, A, C, E, G. Plenty of mnemonic devices that you can use to remember these, but what I recommend if you are not familiar with the staff and clefs at the moment, find a pitch that you can remember every time. Just pick one. Like if you can pick this E in treble clef and know 100% of the time that that's an E, then you could find the other pitches from there just by going up, because every time you go up a space or a line, the, you go forward in the alphabet, you go down, you go backwards in the alphabet. And you could pick one in bass clef too. It doesn't have to be these that I'm circling. Just find one that you know you can remember each time, and then you can refer to that and find the other pitches. Eventually you start to gain some skill and recognition, and you'll be able to recognize the pitches at sight. 
So basically that's the starting point for our musical notation with the staves and the clefs and what they do. Thank you.